we have uh, our basic uh, character movement, but we can only move in a line, um, in a straight line. We want to be able to move all around the floor. So we don't have a, an orthographic kind of view, but more of a perspective one. So the floor comes towards the camera and also uh, goes away of the camera. So it, we have um, a room, a space rather, than, that we can move our character. So let's say we have interaction here or interaction there. So we want to be able to move the character all, to all of these places. So the character is able to move to the uh, X and Y axis, but in a limited space. So we're going to implement that uh, by using the navigation to tip of the Ghidorah engine, which is very useful for this kind of game because we can just uh, define a navigation polygon, a polygon area when we, where we want our character to move and the navigation will find the path for us. Okay, so first thing I want to do is uh, I imported my, my textures my uh, updated textures, but uh, I want this light to have a different mode than the normal mode of the layer. Uh, so I want to create a new shader, visual shader, and open that shader. I want this light to to have a, a hard light filter. So I'm going to type hard light, and here's my hard light filter. So in order to do that, I will create a, a texture function where I will uh, I will uh, pass my input, which my input is my current texture that I'm using. The current texture that this uh, this uh, node is using for the shader, and I'm going to go to input and go to fragment. Okay, actually, first thing I want to do is uh, change the mode of the shader to a canvas item in order to show that it is a 2D uh, shader. And I will go to my input and fragment and then texture. So this is my input texture. This is the texture that I'm using that every individual node that uses this shader has. And I'm just going to pass it to the texture function. Now, the texture function need to be a texture 2D. And from that, I'm taking the RGB and put it to the hard light and to the output. And I'm taking the alpha and putting it to the alpha. And now I have a hard light filter for this light that I'm using. Okay, so now we're going to do some few changes in order to adjust our new navigation or rather a new motion for our player which will be going to be a navigation pathfinding. So I'm going to create a new script for my control node. Go here and create a new script. And I'm going to go call it control, it's fine. Or rather uh, here control. and create. Okay, for this script, I'm going to use, I'm going to need to be using three uh, variables. First one would be the navigation 2D that I'm going to find from the scene and I'm going to use it to find my path. Uh, the second one is for debugging and to see, to actually check if my code is working and will be a, a line that will be drawn along the path that I want the player to follow and this is uh, the player animated sprite. Now, I'm going to change the player sprite to an animated one. So go here and change type and go animated sprite instead of just a sprite. Uh, of course, here now I need to define some animations. Uh, we're going here and we're going from frames to new spread frames and open this up and now let's create some animations. 
So the first one will be the idle, of course. And for the idle now, we just have uh, one frame, which is the player sprite. We don't have an animation yet. And we are also going to create the move animation. Now the move animation, I've already imported my frames that are created in the art section. And in order for this to work properly, uh, you will see now that uh, my animation is playing in F 5 FPS and it's working kind of fine because in 24 FPS, like this, it's going too fast. And that is because, uh, that is because I only uh, created my keyframes and I didn't have any spacing between them. So in the final version, of course, there will be more frames than just seven, and there will be the space between those keyframes. But now, uh, because there isn't, it, 24 FPS is very fast, so I'm going with, uh, with one fourth of the 24 FPS, which is six FPS. Uh, okay, and that's how my character will move for now. And now we have our animation for our player. Of course, I want my default animation to be idle. Uh, and so I'm going to change it here. Now, I'm going to my control. And, ah, wait. One thing I want to do also is, uh, or rather than, that will come next. Okay, let's go here to my script. And now I want to find my path. Look here, I transported the, fu the input function to the control because this is where I'm going to be checking for the player input in order to find my navigation path because this is the script that uh, handles the navigation. So here, I'm going to go create a new variable and call it new path. This is the new path that the player will receive when we, um, we click to a point. And well, now we're going to use the enough to div variable and use the function that navigation to d in Godot uh, exists, which is um, get simple path. Get simple path. And for the path, we need to give uh, the position, the current position that the player is which is uh, the player get global uh, get global get global position yes we want the global position of the player and not the local position because otherwise if the player is not uh, <clears throat> if the player uh, starts in a different position than the level origin then this then the local position will, won't work for the player. Uh, so we we need the, the player position and the the position that we want to go is the position of the cursor. Just like we did uh, with our previous implementation of the character motion. So this is what we're doing here. We're getting the simple path that uh, the navigation to the uh, returns for the initial point, which is the player position, and the final point that we want uh, to go, which is the the mass position, of course. Uh, and now, okay, what we're going to do now? Um, okay, first of all, we want to draw the line. We want to draw the line that uh, this this path uh, this path uh, returns. So we're going to take the line to D, and the points will be set to the new path. And this new path is uh, just an array of points. And of course, this need to be tabbed in. So it's inside my function. And now I have my lines for my path that I want to draw and map the path for my player. And now I went ahead and created the line 2D node and I also want to create the navigation 2D node, which will be where my, my navigation polygon instance will exist. I'm going to create a new one and 
click on this icon here and start putting the points and this is where my character will be able to move inside so be careful on how you place those points and something like this should be fine and I have defined my navigation area and with that being done I'm going to go to my script and actually declare this path variable for my player this path variable that I'm using here and it's going to be uh, a pull vector 2d array because this is what my navigation 2d get simple path returns a point uh, an array of points so that's why I'm using this definition of course I'm changing this to a colon symbol and with this I'm declaring that the path variable will be a, a variable of type pull vector to GRA which I haven't initialized but it will be set to the default initialization which will be zero and now it's time to clear my code a little bit in order to adjust it to the new method that I want to use for my character motion but first thing I want to do is clear my scene a little bit first now I want uh, I don't need a kinematic body anymore because I won't be using any collisions so I'm taking the player sprite outside of the kinematic body I'm deleting the kinematic body and now I'm assigning the script a player motion script to my, uh, my player sprite and I will be calling this just player because this is how I am finding it from the control here our player uh, equals animated sprite and it's called it's taking uh, the object called player so I have my player here uh, it's not showing because my z index needs to be 1 and look what I, I want to do here is uh, what I want to do here is uh, change the offset of my sprite because look here is the center of the sprite so when I click here the character will move here and its belly or rather its, its chest will go to the place that I want to be to that I want the player to go but I want the player I want the player's feet to go to the place I want to go so in order to do that I need to change the offset Uh, something negative. The, I want to change the the Y offset uh, such as my character's feet is in the center of the node. So something like that should be fine. And you will see in a little bit why this is necessary. Okay, so now um, it's time to clear my code here. Uh, first of all, I don't need this input function at all because I'm using I'm using it here. So delete this one. And now what I want to do is um, I want to create some states for my character. So this will be the states that the character will be in and it will uh, define how my per character will will uh, move or will uh, act. These states will be, I will show you the first uh, two states, the four states that I have in mind and will the, def the player will definitely be in. And this will be the idle state, the move state, uh, the climb state, and the interactive state. Now this is four, dif four different states that the character will act differently in its state. So in adult state he won't be able to move, or rather he won't move. In the move state the player will move to the position that we want him to go. In the climb state the player will also move but he will move vertically and will have a different animation. And the interact, the player will have an interact animation, uh, and the player won't be able to move the player to another position until the interact is finished. 
So for now, I'm going to use these two states here. And with that, I'm going to create my actual state variable that will show uh, where, in which state my player is currently in. And of course, the initialization will be the idle state. And for that, I'm going to need to, to need a function that uh, it's going to change my states. And this will be uh, a function called new state. And it will be and will take a, a, an argument called new state. Uh, rather, this will be called change state and will take a, an argument called new state. And inside here, uh, it's going to be where I'm going to be changing my state. And everything that I want to happen when I'm changing my state will also be the moment that I want to change my state, this is where everything will happen. So, for example, right now that I want to change my animations, I will do it in the change state function. So I'm going to match state the the match um, the match condition. It's like the switch condition when uh, where you uh, declare some. Uh, declare some values that you want for your variable to take and for every value you assign a new condition or a new statement and now if the player is in the idle state then i'm going to say self which uh, which is uh, which here i'm saying that i'm taking the current node and because uh, the player is already an animated sprite and I'm going to say self play which is for the animation and play the idle animation here and I'm going to play the idle animation and on move of course I will play the move animation here and these errors exist because the script initially was a kinematic body and I wanted to change, this, change it to an animated sprite type of script. Of course, I'm still getting some errors. So look what I'm going to do here because I'm going to use a kind of different uh, kind of different function for my move method. Then I'm going to say func. I'm going to say move old or something like that because uh, it was my old function that I'm going to use it as a reference but not exactly how I have it right now and I'm going to copy paste everything here right here so this is uh, everything that I did so far I just put it in a function in order to clear it and now in this uh, in this function that I had before, in this code that I used before, I put it in a function and I'm going to comment it out for now, just to clear all the errors and stuff. Okay, okay, okay. So now that I cleared my function, uh, I want to to have a condition in my process function to see. Uh, in which state I'm currently in and whatever the state is I will do the the corresponding uh, the corresponding implementation for my character motion so I'm going to also match here my state and for now have the idle and the move and for the idle right now I'm just I don't need to do anything, I'm just going to pass and and that is because I'm already changing the animation here so the animation will be changed and the player will, doesn't really need to do anything else and here in my move state I just want him to move along path this will be a new function that I will create and this will be how my player will move so 
um, to sum up, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new state. I'm create actually an enum, which will contain all the states that the character will be in. And my initialization is for the idle state. And I'm also creating a change state, change state function, which changes the state uh, of my player according to the, this argument here. And for now, what this function does is also changing the animation. And then I have my process function, which is called every frame. And it's checking which state my, car my player is currently in and according to which state it is, which state the character is, then uh, it's executing the, the corresponding code for my character motion. So now when I'm in the move, when I'm in the move state, I'm going to implement my move along path, which I get from the navigation to D. Okay, so here we go. Funk move along path. This is my function. And now we're starting with uh, getting the starting the starting point of our player. And the starting point of our player is its position. So we need that in order to say in order to move him along the path. We need to know the initial position of the player in order to move him uh, along the path. So we, we need uh, to say that for every, uh, we're going to iterate uh, between uh, the, the um, points of our path. So we say for i in range of the path size. And because the, the path is like an array, uh, we can use its size and we're getting the, the distance to the next point, which is equal to the starting point, the starting, starting point, our player distance to uh, path zero. So our current distance that we want to travel is every time the starting point that we're in, that we're starting, uh, that the player starts until the, the, the first point of our path. And we could use the colon symbol to, to declare that uh, this distance is a fixed type of variable and it's also a pull vector to the array. So now that we have the distance, we're going to say that uh, if we need to use a variable that's called distance, and this will be this will be the step of our player, the step that our player moves every frame, and this is uh, uh, shown by taking its speed and multiply it by delta. So this uh, variable here, the move distance, is the step of a player, uh, the pixels that the player covers every frame. And we pass it to the path here because we need to use it to see if the distance is uh, smaller than our distance next, that means that the player won't pass over that point in one frame. And so that means that the player will keep traveling. And if that's the case, we're going to do, we're going to change the position of the player and we're going to interpolate it linearly. And this is going to be like taking the starting point and use the linear interpolation method. And for that, we're saying the final, the destination that we want to go, which is path zero. And of course, uh, our ratio, which will be uh, the distance divided by the distance to next. And this is just uh, 
the ratio that we want to interpolate, this is step divided by the total distance. Um, so now uh, we're changing the position of the player according to the linear interpolation method. And if that's not the case, uh, if the distance is greater than the distance to next, that means that our step per frame is greater that, than um, the distance that we w want to cover. So then, okay, that means just go to the next point. So remove the first pa path point from our path and tell the character to keep going to the next point. And we need to break it here, so it won't remove the point every time. And what that does is that uh, when we reach to a point where we're too close, very close to this point, then we just need to remove this point from our path, and the new zero point path will be the next one from the previous, and then we just keep working to this one. And finally, if we have uh, uh, we have reached to all up, we, we we passed through all, all points from the path. That means that if the path size is equal to zero, then we want to change to the idle state because we we reach our destination. And this one is called interpolate. And now that I have my function, the move along path function, I'm going to 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 call it by changing the state to move, because this function is called when my state, my player state is move. And to do that, we're just going to we need to change it from the control where the input event is happening. So we're taking the player and we call the change state and pass the move. And of course, we also need to declare this enum of states here also in the control in order to recognize it. Now, the last thing I want to do is use this code here where we changing where we changing the where we flip actually the sprite of our character according to its direction so i'm going to copy paste this here but now there will be uh there will be some changes first of all uh this uh get node Thing will be just self because we are already in the node that we want to change we want to flip the sprite second we have these variables here that we don't need to use we instead will use our starting point dot x and see if our starting point here is smaller than our there are destinations, destination that means the path zero. And copy paste this here. And of course it will be X. We only need about we only care about the X position uh, of uh, of our vector. And every time if if the path the destination is greater than our starting point, then that means that we're moving to the right. So we're not flipping. We're not flipping it. But uh, in the opposite case, then we move it to the left. So we do flip it. And now, last thing is that change the index here to one from your line to the or your line will not show. And click play. You see that. Uh, my character moves along the path and my path is drawn by the line to G node that I created. 
and also he changes to the right direction that I want him to go. Now I want to show you guys one last thing, and that is uh, if I am to take this point here out and move it here, just to show you. I'm here and I want to go there. So my character finds the path and he changes dynamically direction to uh, to the direction that I want him to face. And that is because uh, if I go to my script here, you see that every time I'm taking the position of the current position of my character as my starting point, and I also update the path by removing the, last, the first element and taking the next one. So I can dynamically uh, calculate or rather uh, define the direction of my sprite according to these vectors. Hello, my name is Kilo. I'm the director of an indie game development team called Dimension Omega, where we're currently working on a project called Astra, which is a 2D platformer Metroidvania game. Consider following us on Instagram, where we will be uploading content of our progress. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe, it really helps support the channel.